You now, know, what does what goes that in there? That has to do with the emissions. Uh, diesel exhaust fluid, they mix it in with the uh, catalytic converter to lower the emissions. So where do I get that at? Uh, most of the big truck stops now have dedicated DEF pumps. Okay. Uh, or you can get it at any part store will have it. it comes so in like I should probably pull jugs. into the truck part of the pumps yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I no would. problem. Sure. I mean, I think I used to do that with our big diesel truck sometimes. And as far as the fuel tank, you can fill from either side, so it doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about that. Just pull up to a pump and you can fill from Yeah, it has side. a transfer pump. I'm wondering how fast it is because one family said it took 45 minutes for it to transfer. Yeah, I can't attest to that. Right. <laughs> we'll find out. It should work. Okay. But yeah, you want to keep an eye on that depth and keep it topped off. Is as there much a gauge for that? Uh, on the dash, there should be a graduated scale okay. that will That'll tell work. you where your level's at. And we try to fill them all up before they take off out of here so you don't have to worry about that. Okay. Okay. And your turn signal cameras, you have one on either side. And as soon as you hit the turn signal, it's going to pop one. Okay. And here's your plug in for the engine heater. Oh yes, it did. my brother, a guy drives our big rig, and he okay. wanted me to ask about heater block thingy. Correct. That's, That's it. your plug in okay. there, and you just plug an extension cord into it, plug it in. Awesome. Uh, if it's going to be super cold, leave it plugged in overnight. You know. Well, we use way we, ahead of time. we leave our rig plugged in at all times. Okay. I just have to upgrade my box right now. So. Good deal. All right. So in the morning time, I plug that in too. Do what? In the wintertime, I'll plug oh, that yes, in, too. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right. Engine stuff. Master cylinder up here. And you should never really have to add brake fluid unless you've had some kind of an issue. Uh, power steering fluid down here. Okay. This is your main fuel filter. And this cap comes off. If you service this thing yourself, sometimes you'll get an airlock in it. There's actually a pump under here so you can pressurize that back up for the fuel. Okay. But you should, probably shouldn't have to worry about that. Um, Engine oil, engine oil dipstick. Your engine oil fill will be up here. Uh -huh. Okay. And then they check the transmission fluid, fluid through the shift panel. So there's a sequence you got to go in to, to okay. check that fluid. Otherwise, everything looks nice and clean up here. Yes. I think it's, uh, I don't know how many miles is on it. I have 11,000. 11, That's nothing it's on not these. not broken yet. No, not at all. These things will last forever. But keep it serviced, regular intervals, that kind of stuff, and, and it'll take care of it. Okay. Uh, radiator overflow tank. So if you ever had to add antifreeze to it, and check your owner's manuals for the specific type of antifreeze, or call Cummins or someplace like that. They can direct you the right way. Your washer fluid tank, and then your air filter up here. The rest is all elf and magic. Yep, <laughs> and it has an indicator too. Yes. When they start getting plugged up, you know, start showing more yellow on it. Yeah. Sounds like you know some about it. Uh, I worked on diesel engines in the Air Force. Oh, okay. Right on. So you could rebuild the thing. I could. <laughs> uh, not a lot right here. Power seats, switches are in the front. What were you saying? A lock? Not a lot in here. Not a lot. Not okay. in a passenger Power, department, okay, but yeah. you're. Switches are all right there on the front for both seats. No glove compartment. Nope. I'm going to miss my center console. The one in mine has a lot of storage. You've so. got a little bit of storage up, up there, there okay. but not much, not a lot at all. Uh, your other fuel tank and your other turn signal camera. So the manual says it's 74 gallons gas. Is that each or just combined? That's probably combined, right? Probably combined. Because that's what the book said, was 74. Yeah, okay. I'm not exactly sure on this I would think one. it would be combined. Yeah. I'd, they're not the super tanks like on the semi and road trucks. Right. Storage compartment. Pretty good amount of storage in there. One thing I did notice is that rod. And I'll take a look at that. That needs to be attached up there somewhere. I'll figure out what's going on with that. But it, it leaves that wire hanging down. Yeah. Not up. Okay. But we'll look at that. We don't want you grabbing your storage stuff and pulling it out every time right. you slide out. <laughs> and I'm not getting very good reception. That was in the here. bonus. <clears throat> I can't believe this. That's nice. Isn't it? I mean, it's nice. Why wouldn't you? My son's excited Keeps about that. Entertained. Yes. Uh, I like well, having a TV going. Sure. Background noise. Yeah. Storage in there. I love how they have lights. Yes. 
big storage. Oh, wow. And that also passes through. Now, you got to be aware that that's part of the slide out mechanism. So, yeah, if you got something up there, it. it could grab something right. and yank it out the other side. And one more. And you have a 110 outlet in here as, as well. Nice. I don't see pass through. It'd been nice to pay to put a little passport through there so you could run a cord. Right. The, the, uh, furnace. And you've already got a mud dauber screen on it, so yeah. you're good to go there. And you just get the thermostat inside and fire him up. That's your range exhaust up there. Yep. And that unfortunately it had two little lock tabs on the bottom of it that you can see. Mm -hmm. uh, if you leave that thing unlocked, you could get some noise from that thing flapping going down the road. It's awfully high up there to, yeah. to get up and unlock every time. But if you keep a little step suit or something with you, you can know, get up there and reach it. That's, why people, carry that's why people carry ladders on the back of their rigs. I always yeah, wondered that. that. And to help clean them. A lot of guys like to pull up the campground and start cleaning their motorhomes. Yeah, it's supposed to. Yeah, <laughs> they do it anyway. Right. You know that. Uh, you got, looks like you got valve extenders on there. Why well, is it pointing the wrong way? Yeah, I, oh, because it's yeah, got so the. so it doesn't stick out and get it's got the, torn up. Yeah. Yeah. And your other one is in here. It doesn't stick out real far, but at least they've got yeah. it pointed the right direction and you can, you can get to it to check air pressure. Just really keep up on your air pressure to make sure you don't have a low tire on the inside, a little special. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. Propane tank. That's your outside gauge. And you'll have an inside gauge as well on the monitor panel. Okay, the uh, question I have is the manual says that it's got a 13 gallon propane tank, mm -hmm. and then it says total propane is like some ungodly number. Is that for the heater? I mean, the hot water heater? Uh, yeah, the propane is going to run your furnace, water heater. Hmm, that's weird. Okay, I'll have to show you when we're done videoing what the book said. Yeah. Maybe we can figure Very it out. <laughs> uh, that's your main shutoff. Your LP regulators behind there. The yellow is your fill valve and then your 80% outage valve. Okay. They only fill 80% full. Yes. Okay. You're familiar with the smell of propane, you know what mm -hmm. you'd notice it. Okay. Now, your freshwater tank drain is over here. They've got that marked as a low point drain as well. But it comes off the bottom of your fresh tank and just out, and it dumps out right behind the wheel. Oh, okay. So just flip that lever down. That's nice to know, because mine froze one year. Yeah, make sure you drain that. And if it's going to be a couple of weeks, it doesn't sound like it will be. But if it's going to be a while before you use it again, it's a good idea to drain that tank out. And so it doesn't go stale yes. on there. Storage galore. Storage. Yeah. Come on, love this. Most people are wanting for more storage. you got plenty. Yep. <laughs> That's a good thing. All right, backup camera up there, mm -hmm. and that's adjustable. If you're going to tow a car or something, you may want to look further down or farther back. Either way, there's a couple of screws on the sides to right. open that thing out. Uh, your receiver hitch and a seven-way tow plug. Mm -hmm. And a four-flat back there as well. Okay. And you have a trailer you haul your side sides on? You have a car trailer. Okay. Do you have four-flat? Mm, no, no, I think it's got a... You got the big seven. I think. Seven. I don't know. <laughs> well, you should be able to. I can't remember. Even if it's a six way, you can. You, there's adapters to go from that seven to a six or four or whatever you want, but you've got seven and four there. So you yeah. Come up with something. I know my little trailers are four. Yeah. I'm not sure about the big trailer. You've got the ladder for access to the roof. Uh, you do want to check that roof. I would check it quarterly. Uh, just have somebody pop up there and make sure nothing crazy is going on. You don't have a stick hanging out of the roof or an air conditioner or something like that. I make him use his drone for it. That too. That I had a lot of people that like to do that. Yeah. A lot of times if the coach doesn't have slide out toppers, these guys will use their drones to look on top of the slides real quick yep. before they pull them in. I love slide out toppers. They yep. save you. Oh, absolutely. Uh, generator exhaust coming out down below the water heater. But this is your water heater here. And that sets on them two pins. Okay. Mm -hmm. And your main on switch is out here. And these particular kinds, these tankless ones have a flow sensor in it, so as soon as the water flow sees it'll fire itself up. And so take to, off. to use it I have to have this on switch you on here. You have to turn on. this on. Okay. Right? Once you get everything uh, I don't remember if it's winterized or not, but as soon as everything's 
fired up and ready to go, pressurized, kick that on, and we'll be ready to go. Okay. Now, initially, you want to run a little bit of water, let that thing fire Fill up, up you know, a half a gallon or so, set it off, and then you'll start getting better hot water. Right. Initially, it's going to be a little bit lukewarm. Yep. Okay. Center that hole in there. Yep. They fit nice and tight. Keep the bugs out of there too. <coughs> the beast. Generator. That's enough. Now here's your main output breaker. So if it's running, you're not getting power inside and check that breaker. Okay? Your hour meter down here. And your start stop switch from outside. And you have one inside as well. Yes. Uh, yellow is engine oil, the other one is coolant. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if it's been a while since you started it, hold that stop button, that'll prime it. Oh. Just like your other one. No, I never knew that. You never do? Okay. And then you can fire it up. And the colder it is, the longer it'll take to go through its glow plug process. City water, okay? So fresh water in. Fresh water in. Now, uh, water pressure regulator is always a good idea. Yes, I, have, I use one. You've got one, okay. Uh, they've got it set up over here for the configuration for different uh, different settings. If you're on city water, you go two and six uh, to fill your fresh water tank. City fuel tank, you go one and six. So it just depends on how you're using it. Uh, normal is running off of the freshwater tank. So if you're dry camping or you have to use the tank, three and five. Okay. So it's just a matter of configuring the orientation. The normal is for freshwater tank. Okay. Off the when we're dry camping. Dry camping, correct. And city water would be two and six. So. All right. Low point grains here. Looks like you got antifreeze in there at least. So that's your hot and cold low point grains. And then they have another low point over here in the back. So when we take off today, is it going to be ready to go? Uh, I don't know if you're supposed to be winterized and ready or if that's what you want. Yeah, you it needs to be ready to go. Okay. You want fresh water in it, fill it up so you're ready to take yeah. off? Yes, please. Okay. We can do that. You got your sewer hose hanging out. And that comes out of the cap off of there. And that cap is what holds that thing in. And then that'll swing out. Oh. And it just snakes through. Nice. I think so. Good way to do it. Yeah, my son will like that. He's the one that gets stuck doing it all the time. <laughs> well, unfortunately, it's got to be somebody's job. You to make sure you spin that thing on there good so it doesn't come flopping out as you're traveling. And your dump handles are right up here. Okay. And Pretty easy, they're color coded gray for gray water and black for black water. Okay. Okay. And generally, you dump your black water first. Yes. Close it back up and let the gray water rinse it out. Uh, water filter, and that's your filter that will go in it. You want to flush it out first, and we'll, we'll get that done for you. And you'll be ready to roll. Outside shower, pretty easy money. It's a nice one. Cable and satellite inputs. Uh, your water pump switch and then your light switch for out Nice! There. And then your black black tank flush. And yes. Did you have one of them on the other one? No. Okay. Now, you'll use that when you're at the dump station. You'll have the black valve open so you don't pressurize that tank. Mm -hmm. You just pop your hose on there, run it for a couple of minutes, and that'll flush out any debris, Sweet. clean the sensors off. That's a big help. Yes. You still should use some chemical in it to keep the odors down, but other than that, should be ready to roll. Should work just like your other one. Mm -hmm. 
You got that, Andrew? That's your job right there. That's your panel, <laughs> that's your compartment. Might even have to get him a new hose sometime. <laughs> and just snake it back up through there. And, uh, ready? Power cord. They got him stretched out. The, the uh, retract switch is right up here. How do you pull? Do you just pull it to get it yeah, out? Okay, it out that's what I was wondering. Uh, auto retract in. And you just kind of got to guide that in there like a winch cable. Yeah. And it'll all fit in there. It gets pretty tight there at the end. Okay. But normally you can run it through there. And there's fairly rollers on it, so yep. you're not going to hurt anything. Gonna that's going to be nice. Oh, yeah. Storage, storage, storage. What is this coming down right here? That's your engine exhaust. Engine exhaust? Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't look like it goes very far, does it? Mm -mm. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, when them little cars are next to you, you can romp on it and smoke them out. <laughs> <laughs> Got more storage up here. And your batteries. And slider tray. Four house batteries. Four house batteries. Uh, definitely keep an eye on the water. You want to check the water using it all the time like you're going to. I would check them monthly mm -hmm. and top them off with distilled water when you need to add water to them and eventually you will. Uh, you can expect it's a wide open compartment so you're gonna they're gonna be dirty all the time. Uh, some corrosion, anti-corrosion treatment on mm -hmm. those would be a good thing. You see a little bit starting on that one back there. But that's pretty natural for batteries. Yes. A lot of stuff hidden up in there. Nothing you should have to be concerned with. That relay right there would be a charge relay, which allows the engine to charge the house batteries while the engine's running. Mm -hmm. And they cram a lot of stuff in there. They do. <laughs> I think half the weight of these things is wiring. <laughs> yeah, we rely on our batteries a lot, so that would be an important thing. There's that pass through. And then that's it. I'll see what that's supposed to be doing. I don't like it sitting like that. Let's see if that can be attached up. Okay. Okay. So we'll look at some more stuff once we get inside. But this button down here is your auxiliary start. Your, what emergen does that mean? your emergency start. So if the engine battery was dead. You can still start it off the house batteries. That's house batteries. The yes. momentary okay. start. Yes. So it's just a push button. Switch. Ours is called boost. Battery boost. Yeah. Same thing. Same. Okay. Okie doke. A little bit of storage there. Yeah, a little bit. Those are hot, so I'm gonna, I've got halogen bulbs to replace them. I mean, LEDs to replace them with. Hike up the entryway. Yes, seven steps. Yeah, I don't know how the doggies are gonna feel about that, but. <laughs> All right, this is your main power. That's your battery disconnect for the house. Okay. Okay. Uh, awning switch. Being popped out there. Which awning is that? that the like? main awning. Oh. Get him all the way out there. Does it tell you when it's done? Nope. But when you see the flap start to come down, and that's one of the things about these, these will actually turn backwards too far. Oh. So you want to be mindful of that when you're putting it out. You want that flap to be hanging pretty much straight right. down. Are there lights? Uh huh. There's LED lights on the end of there. Let's see which switch that is. Is that one there? You got an LED strip up there. Okay. You can run it down just a little bit more than that. Get a little better view of the lights. Yeah. 
Oh, that's so here, nice. Here. Loads aren't supposed to be attracted to the LEDs as bad. Alright. Lights, power, awning. This is your leveling system. Okay. Kick it on and it'll go through its little scroll. And once you get the Bigfoot symbol on there, it should be ready to go. We'll hit the auto button and let it do its thing. Now you want to try not to be bouncing around in a coach while it's leveling. Okay kind of upsets the sensor when it bounces back and forth. And generally you want to level first and then put your slides out. Pretty much level, it's gonna bring the rest of them down to stabilize at this point. Pretty good little systems, don't see a whole lot of issues with them. That is awesome. Now, it's not a bad idea to keep some pads with you, anyways, to put underneath uh -huh. of those so you don't taco those feet on them. And she's good. Yep, maybe not. Drop down a little bit. Now we're good. We've got a solid big foot on it, so you're ready to go. You can also do it manually if you just want to hit the manual button, and you can go to front, rear, right, and left sides. Either way, kick her off, and you're camping. Uh, LP gas detector right here. And that's wired into the system, so there's no batteries to change on it. Okay. 110 outlet there. Power step switch. Turn it on or off so it doesn't cycle every time you open the door. Yes. They do have the ignition override on it, probably yes. just like your other one. Courtesy light, path light, security, porch lights, and then inside lights. What's a security light? Uh, steer lights outside, generally. And on the other side, let me see if there's one right outside. Solid wood floor. Yeah, that's kind of funny how they designate them, but they there's a orange light on the side. Okay. It, just like another porch light, but they call it a security light, and then the porch light is actually this one here by the door. Okay. Light switches up underneath the cabinets for several of these. Now the one over the dinette, it has a switch there. Okay. And these two lights has the switch in the front. Yeah. Okay. can run that slide out at this point. Just hold the button. You just want to make sure nothing's trapped behind the faces. Yeah. And the seats aren't leaned back. Great to get into it. And of course, make sure there's no trees on the other side of it. Right here. And it's a different system. This one actually uses a swim tech system, which has a little motor up here at the top mm -hmm. on each side, and then it uses a bar that connects them. So it goes out nice and straight. It doesn't drop down or anything like the front one does. Makes a whole lot more room that way, though, huh? Yeah, it does. There we go. All right. Back in the kitchen here, make sure don't miss anything along the way. Not the one that did the checkout on it, so I'm trying to make sure I don't miss something. That is your microwave that's plugged in in the cabinet. Yes. Looks like you got all the oven parts, convection oven, 
still got the label on it. <laughs> All right. and the stove top pops up and back. Yeah, I heavy. love that it has the, the tile, stuff. tile instead of just that because that yeah. gets so hot right there. Oh yeah, it does. I won't and use my you stove get stuff top and splattering on it. That's you, yeah. it's hard to clean that. No regular oven because you got the convection oven. Right. You do have the igniter for the top burners. Some storage in there. Yep, a little bit. Not really a good place to put a trash can though. It's one of the complaints I've heard over the years. Oh, ours goes right here. Right up there. Yeah. Nice big drawers. Uh, these things do have a weight capacity on them, so don't take all your cast iron skillets and oh, no. stuff with them. I've got the magma for okay. the, like the sailboat, com mm -hmm. they compact. I, get, I use those. Okay. That'll work. see a lot of people that pack too much stuff in those, and those bottoms are very thin, and they'll yeah. pop down, and you have issues with those things not wanting to close right and that kind of stuff. Uh, this is your travel So lock. I don't see any switches on this thing. So mm -hmm. when I'm going down the road, is it automatic? No. You have to... This is all electric, so you have to use the inverter, and I'll show you where to turn that on. Okay. But yeah, when you're going down the road, use that inverter to keep it cold. And when you get there, plug it in, turn your inverter back off, and you're ready to go. Okay. Yeah. Nice having a big refrigerator. Yeah, the Controls. inverter is the thing that I have trouble learning, understanding how to operate. Okay, we'll, we'll go over that. It's the switch for it is up there. Uh, all your controls are on the top. Push button controls. That thing's huge. Yeah. Nice. We always had Especially to. Especially if you're gone for a couple of weeks. I mean, yeah, we always had to tow the car. Uh, cool and everything with you. Even makes blue ice. <laughs> <laughs> and it has a lot on the bottom side of it as well. The things not want to stick. I'll put some new stick them on there. We'll make her lock down. All right. The bedroom TVs or the bunk TVs. Controls are all on the face of it. You've got headphones for each one. And the light up in the bunk. Pretty cool little bunk area. Yeah, the kids are going to love that. A little bit of storage down below. Mm-hmm. Light switches here. Courtesy light is the pathway lights. Mm -hmm. uh, that one controls the back air conditioner. Back air conditioner only. The yeah. one up in the front will control the yeah, furnace and the uh, front air conditioner. Correct. Good amount of hanging storage for. Mm -hmm. Considering I don't have a bedroom party at all in mine, <laughs> you even have storage behind the TV. Like the Taj Mahal, yeah, yes. even behind the TV, you got it. They use every available inch, it looks like. Oh, those are nice. Nice big drawers, full extension. Oh, I have an end table. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna be spoiled now. <laughs> well, that's good. You need to be. Every once in a while, you need to be spoiled. Right? Yeah, I'm eventually gonna put a washer dryer unit in it. Yeah. <gasps> it has underbed storage? Yes, it sure does. Now, I'd forgotten about rod. that. To hold it up, so be careful with that. That yeah, can be easily knocked that's out where all my blankets are gonna go. And you got a lot of blankets. <laughs> well, we travel with a lot of blankets. Sure. Now over here is your electrical panel. Okay, that's your main one tens coming in. Uh, and then the rest of your one ten breakers, and then all your fuses on this side. Okay. And it looks like they've got it labeled pretty well on the inside of the door, so you can tell what's what. And then the converter or the onboard battery charger is in the bottom half of that. It's a lower section. Mm -hmm. So when you're plugged electric or running a generator, that's what's charging your house batteries up. Alrighty. Yep, there is an outlet on that side. The outlet is right on the inside oh, nice. of that. So you've got one there. There should. You know, there's one on that side too. Let me close this down. No, I don't see one unless, unless it's way down low. I don't see it down there. Looks like you got the 
at the one anyways. It's better than what I have now. <laughs> better than none, huh? Right. Uh, air conditioning, the rear air. You got the quick cools. Pop those open, it'll give you a good blast of air here, but it does take away from the ducting. Okay. You're not getting as much up front. And then your intake air filters right there. Just take that, turn that a half a turn, that little screw. Uh -huh. Take them out, rinse them out. Stick them back up in there and you're ready to roll again. Okay. Remote for the TV? A uh, couple of remotes up front there. Okay. We'll see if there's any. I didn't see any other ones just kind of laying around. Generally try to put all the remotes in a drawer in the kitchen to yeah, that's keep what everything I did. centrally located. Some of these Damn. things got 10 or 15 remotes to them, it seems like. Awnings and everything else. You know, the bathroom's going to be your main GFI. Yes. All your outlets are hooked to a GFI, so if you got one not working, check that. Foot flush porcelain toilet. Nice. Porcelains are a lot better than them old plastic things. Big improvement over the years. Now, you do want to make sure when you're traveling that you lock that shower door. Lock it close. Like lock close it close. It and then correct. Okay. Those things will fall down while you're driving. That just kind of pops okay. over. Okay. Okay. Uh, this control here is for that water heater. <gasps> oh. So you do have temperature control on that. Okay. So start him out in the middle, see where it's at, and then just kind of adjust from there. Uh, bathroom light, the bath fan, water pump switch, and the shower light. And that's something. A lot of them are not putting lights into showers anymore. You walk into those things and it's just dark. Mm -hmm. Kills me. <laughs> but you've got an air conditioning duct in the bathroom too. That helps out with the steam and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I cannot wait to sign the papers on this thing. <laughs> this is really the first time. purchase that I've ever been this excited about. Really? And not nervous at all. Good. So I'm, yeah. Well, you've got a little experience with the other one. Yeah. So you know what you're doing. And basically, we're just learning where the new stuff is mm -hmm. right now. Uh, front air conditioner, like I said, this one you run, controls the furnace too on gas heat. Uh, electric heat is the air conditioner running backwards. Kick him on for a minute. Uh, your fan speed high and low. And if you've ever experienced high humidity conditions running an air conditioner on low, that can cause some freeze ups sometimes. If you notice you're not getting good airflow out of that air conditioner, turn it down on low or high, back up on high I instead didn't know of low that. speed. Uh, that can stop some of that freezing up or turn it off for 10 okay. minutes. The real high humidity conditions can cause that. Like sometimes. at the lake? Yeah, <laughs> a lot of times. Huh. Depending on the temperature and how, how humid it is. Now, can you hear the t the TV over the um, air conditioner? Well, that's as loud as it's going to be right there. Is it? Of course, the remote. It's electric. You got to push a button over here. Right there. We believe it's important to help educate our young viewers through our program. That's pretty good. Not too bad. Isn't that a speaker? Informational programs designed to help achieve that. Those are speakers. These programs provide information about our world. I wonder how those come on. There are reports available to the public. Yeah, they may run off the road. Just go to the website. But, and get you know, the you can always run the rear air conditioner. If you're up here trying to eat or whatever, run the rear air conditioner. Oh, yeah. So you're going to get filling up here as well. They are ducted together? Yeah, it's all ducted in the same duct work. I didn't so know that. if you're running the rear, you'll still get some cooling. It may not be mm -hmm. as much as you're getting back there. Now, how how do they get up here? They should climb? Yeah, yeah, they don't use a ladder for these. Okay. Most of them got enough that. spring left in their legs when they're kids. Oh, yeah. They get in there. Me, I'd have a little bit of trouble anymore. I have a bad knee. And I just had shoulder surgery in June. Yeah. All right. Uh, table. You got to make that into a bed. It's kind of like the Winnebago's. Come back out of the way. 
Yeah, my table's different. Is it okay? I've got the U-shaped dinette in mine, so oh, okay. I'm not familiar with this kind. Those have a pretty good amount of room in them, the U-shaped. Pretty good. Oh, nice storage. So, yeah, storage underneath as well. That, flip that lever back the other way. And now we'll push down. It sets on top of there. Everything folds back down, and those two pieces on the bunk are your fill-ins. Okay. Had to work in a pinch. Yeah, it will. Bring that back up. Just flip that lever back the other way to lock it in. Oh, I got that one got the pull down shades. This work really nice. I like them a lot better than the accordion ones. Yeah. Okay, so is this a jackknife? That is a regular height. Of it. Old school stuff there. Up and out. Sleep like a taco, that's a perfect bed. <laughs> right. <laughs> Wonder what size this is. Full or clean? Man, it looks like a full to me. I wouldn't think it'd be a clean. Yeah, it does look like a full. Uh, seat, seat belts, belts. are tucked back behind. Which okay. They most of their lives back there. Yeah, it doesn't look like that's been used much. Smashed as it is. Cody, that's where you're sleeping. <laughs> Hi. How's it going? Doing good. We're almost done. Wow. I think. We're moving through. Yeah. Well, she's had one already, so a lot of the stuff is obviously familiar. Right. I bet you can guess where And then your front bone. He sticks that tongue out there. See how he gets it. Purple, just like a draft tub. Yeah, I think. I think you're on the right track. put in up here. Uh -huh. Ladder, and that's just going to clip in there. It can pop that over. Gives you a little better access in and out of the front. Right. Be careful what you put up there. If you use them for storage, you don't want to be rolling out the back of it. Yeah, I specifically got my Winnebago without one of these and regretted it from the time I got it. My, I had an entertainment center up here and I needed it for storage and for the kids. That's a nice big size bunk up there. Yeah, that's my son's bed. Andrew, that's where you're sleeping. You've got storage up there Oh, there's storage? Oh, wow. He's going to like that. Uh, light switch and what you really need up about overhead. Yeah. Smoke detector here. Yeah, it has a uh, 9 volt in it. Check that at time change or every 6 months, whatever you normally would. Here, crank up TV antenna. Mm -hmm. It's down. Yep. <laughs> down when you travel. And you just, it's got two arrow points on it. Did your mm -hmm. other one have the same yeah. antenna? Okay. I ended up putting a king in it, one of those king ones. Those are nice. Yeah, that way you don't have to yeah. mess with them at all. Yeah, I'll probably put that in here. Crank in now while we're thinking about it. I asked them to take it. It's winterized right now. I asked them to take it and get it road ready. Okay. So you don't want it winterized when you leave? No. Okay. Because I'm going to be using it all right. next weekend. We head to Texas. All right. So we'll de we'll it and uh, just fill it up and, and let her go. Yep. Is there anything in the engine compartment in this compartment I need to know about? Uh, we'll get up there here just to uh, <clears throat> check this out here. Now that's your slide out switch for this main slide. Okay. Uh, your monitor panel, which gives your fresh water level, black, gray, battery condition, and then a water pump switch. Uh, this is your inverter. Alright, so like I said, when you go to take off down the road, kick that thing on. Okay. Alright, and then when you go out to unplug, the fridge stays on. It won't shut off for any reason. And you're ready to roll down the road. And then when we connect shore power back up, it goes off. We turn that you off. You have to manually turn it off, but yes. Yes, okay. turn that back off and you're, and you're up again. Okay. Pretty easy money. 
man. Start stop for the generator. And oh, that's the, the generator station. Okay. Correct. And you can set that auto gen up to come on it, battery voltage, look at your manual and to give you the specific instructions on how to set that up. But it has auto gen start on it. To keep the bat house batteries from going dead? Mm -hmm. Oh, Angie, you need to learn how to do that. Yeah. And if you read that manual a couple of times, and it'll it'll all sink in. Yeah, where's the manual nice package for this thing? Uh, See yet. We'll find them somewhere. There we go. We got a mess of manuals. We got a brake controller in there already. Do that, Andrew. You got a brake controller. Yeah. Looks like there's your heat pump, air conditioner. Andrew, you have a lot of reading to do. A lot of reading to do. That's information on those little TVs in the back. Looks like you've got everything. Touch up paint. Chassis stuff should all be in this book for the most part. Those books. And you're gonna need a suitcase for all this. My Winnebago has a little suitcase with stuff in it. Winnebago has a nice package on it. Yeah, they do. And then on your leveling system, that's a different leveling system. Filter, antenna, water heater. So it looks like you've got all the Yep, Manuals looks like it's there. there. Okay, that air conditioner is cold. <laughs> well, that's what you want. And if you do, are you familiar with the heat pumps? Does your little one have a heat pump? I don't know. If you switch Pretty that sure over, it does. If you switch that air conditioner over to electric heat, yeah. Uh, if it's been on, it can take it. Up to five minutes before it actually comes on. It has uh -huh. that reversing valve. And yeah, all that mine does. Mine does have that. Okay. Some people don't understand. It takes it a minute to, to yeah. come up. And all right, let's pop up front. Which seat do you want me in? Go in the driver's seat. That's where you're gonna be. In it. Yeah. Time. Most of the time when Andrew lets me drive. <laughs> now they got the Prodigy mounted down here, so you're ready to go. And when you plug a car into it or a trailer or something, it'll it'll tell you what's going on. Okay. Uh, to set it, yeah, it won't let me change anything right now. But you're going to set the intensity with that thumb wheel over here. Right. The bottom lever is to apply the brakes to the trailer only, so that you're not stepping on a truck brake. Okay. Uh, you'd use that in a fishtailing type situation. If that thing starts to sway on you, you can reach down and tap the brakes on the trailer and kind of straighten it up a little bit. Does it go all the way up? It should go all the way up. It's stuck. Seems like it. it wants to go down, not up. Break. All right. Window switches, door lock, mirror heat, regen. That has to do with that uh, def fluid. And go ahead and kick the key on. Let's see if that scale shows up. Kick it all the way on. Uh, no. That gauge there, the green one, uh -huh. is showing your def fluid. gauge to tell where you're at. Like I said, a lot of the truck stops are selling that stuff, got pumps for them because the big trucks take a lot of it. Your parking brake, you can kill it now. How do you set the parking brake? Just pull Just it? Pull to apply, push when you're getting ready to take off. Okay. So put on the brake, release the park brake, and then shift down into drive and you're on the road. Now you've got a middle pedal there, that little one for the tilt on the steering. Oh, neat. To adjust it around. How do I how do I lower my seat? I uh, mean, with its power, the switch is in the front. You 
That goes up. There it goes. That it? That's it. <laughs> wow. That's weird. It's going to take some getting used to. Yeah. The steering wheel may come up a little bit more. lot to play with huh yeah <laughs> these things drive really nice though yeah I haven't driven it yet you haven't mm -mm. well you're about to aren't you is the key still on um no It was an accessory. That's why I was looking for a camera signal. I know you guys are going to have stuff to move over, right? So what we're doing is we're making a place for you to back in your aspect here, so it'll just be easy to back and forth. Okay. And that unit for this one. Okay. Thank you. All inside. That's nice. Uh, heater controls. Pretty uh, yeah, they need the same. common heater controls. You got ashtrays. I didn't think oh they put ashtrays in I've things anymore. I've never seen an ashtray in a vehicle <laughs> in forever. It's been a while, hasn't it? It's like the GPS signal. Okay. It's up there. You even got all the Shorty. Mm. It looks like you've got Freightliner information up here on the chassis, paint codes, things like that. Wheelbase, 275. Looking for tire pressure. Do they have tire pressures on that mm -mm. one? Uh, the door sticker there will probably yeah, have it probably tire does. pressures on it. Yeah, get a get a good tire gauge so you can really keep up on that. Uh, do inspect that roof, keep up on the roof maintenance, things like that. Uh, furnace needs service or the generator needs service. Get them up. The generator should be every hundred hours or every six months, whichever comes first. Uh, and run that generator. Hopefully you'll use it and not oh, let yeah, it just we sit it a there. Lot. Okay. Those things would rather be running than sitting still. Yeah. That's just like everything else, they tend to break when they're not being used. Alright. It's really not a whole lot to it up here. Kick the brake off, hammer down, and you're gone down the road. Mm-hmm. Need some floor mats. Why do we need big floor mat? Anymore? Yeah, where's the floor mat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to get me some. What is this increase decrease over here? Is that that must be lighting? Yeah, for your dash dimmers. Oh, for the speed. this one. Oh, speed control. Yeah, that's for your cruise control. Increase decrease. Uh, resume. It's all right. Accelerate. Set, correct. And this one will be for your headlights, marker lights. No automatic headlights. Right. You gotta actually reach out and turn them on. I hate when that happens. <laughs> Good looking truck though. USB. Yep, USB and a, and a cigarette lighter, of all things. Okay. And that remote is for this radio. Okay. Not too bad. Mm -hmm.